today we are going to talk about convergence convergence of mind matter and time convergence of nature art and science and i want to kindle this idea in front of you today so that you can visualize your life differently i want to talk about three very beautiful words that were introduced to me by reading a book on leonardo da vinci and i'm deeply impressed by the greatest genius of all times he talks about arte scienza very beautiful word it means whole brain thinking it is about bringing art science imagination all together to solve a problem he also talks about connexion funiabo you just heard everything in this world is connected to each other and curiosita it's about having the curiosity to find these connections and if you bring these three words into your life you will see that you can find this equation okay i'm going to have two mathematical principles that i'm going to talk about next five slides has grade 8 mathematics for those of you who don't want to worry about the mathematics just ignore you will you will trust me at the end of it but if for those of you who follow there is a lot of science there's mathematics behind what i'm talking about so let's assume that we model your life what you're doing in this moment was very similar to what you were doing the previous moment wasn't it and with some change c i came on board what you were doing before you were doing something and now i but i am the change c that has happened you can have this moment a micro moment an hour a day a whole lifetime but whatever you were doing in the previous moment is linked to whatever you were doing in this moment and let's sort of write it as a mathematical equation as yn plus 1 is a function of yn plus c right so let's just say it's a square function yn plus 1 is yn square plus c so what we have done essentially is created a feedback mechanism from your past into your future and we have linked it as a network as a link this is on the real life now you could have this link in your imaginary life your thoughts and anything else this is a link of things it's a sequence of things a set of moments in your life a network between your past your present and your future now i've got a second mathematical concept that you are a complex creature you would believe in me will you'll believe me on that now a complex equation is written as a plus ib where i was the imaginary number if you if you remember your grade 8 maths right so now i'm going to put both of them together so you you are a network a, a, your life is a network of events and you are a complex creature and if i take these two together we have got two equa one equation and two variables so lots of answers are possible and i'm going to plot this plot this imaginary on the y axis and the real on the x axis right and what is real and imaginary in your life let's say that what is real is what you can see your seen your body your action your visible energy and what is not seen which is imaginary is the intangible your emotions your thoughts your personality your funiabo your giri that's it so that's where these two talks correlate and i did not put these two talks together funiabo did right now look at it this is mind and matter this is not time and time is going to be on the x axis now after 1000 iterations of this equation that is the image that comes up now what are those colors when the equation converges and gives me a result of a and b i put one color and if the equation does not converge i put a different color and the speed at which the equation converges the time it takes to find the solution are the different shades there was a gentleman called mandelbrot benoit mandelbrot he was a french mathematician studying in yale he stumbled upon this and he stumbled upon this by looking at the circumference of britain what is the coastline so he was studying that problem and he said that if i take a 200 km long yardstick i will get 2300 km as the answer now i reduce the yardstick it becomes 2800 km if i make it 50 km the yardstick it becomes 3500 km and you can keep going on and on as he reduces the size of the yardstick the size of the coastline of britain keeps on changing till you go to microscopic levels where you're taking the taking your yardstick on around a grain of sand and then you realize that there is nothing to measure it is too big it's the answer is infinite so he said that i cannot tell you what the size of of the coastline of britain is but i can tell you how rough it is what are the characteristics of this roughness and from there came a whole study of fractals now fractals are there all over the world let's take a look at fractals in our coastlines the one on the left are coastlines in greenland 
and in Argentina. The one on the right is a, uh, the one on the top over there is the, uh, is the plains of Australia and down sand dunes of Saudi Arabia. Now, when you take the same equation that I showed you, and I go deep into it after lots of iterations, you get something like this. Doesn't it look so much like the coastlines that we are talking about? Nature presents itself as fractals, and you can model everything as those equations. Fractals are there in all dimensions. They are there in the smallest of your brain cells to the universe. They are there in the birth of a cell to the birth of a star. You will see how identical they look. The middle of your eye and a nebula, they are all identical, right? Fractals in nature, plants, animals, they all are modelable as equations and they all are nature presenting themselves with their own fonyabo. That where is the knowledge staying? The knowledge is staying in there. Now, if you look at the internet and start looking at how it has grown by itself over 40, 50 years, 40 years now, and you'll start plotting those pictures of what is connected to what and how many people are going to each traffic, that's a fractal as well. So I've come to the conclusion that your life is a fractal. Anything that is a network or can be modeled as a network displays fractal characteristics. And since you are in the continuum from small cells all the way to the universe, you should be a fractal as well. So now, if you understand this concept, come back to that equation that we had looked at, right? 1,000 iterations later, we saw your imaginary and your real axis, the seen and the unseen, your body and your mind and your foniabo on the others. I keep repeating that word because it's a good word to use for today. And now I'm going to do iterations in billions of iterations because today's computers allows me to do billions of iterations. I'm going to keep changing the C of that equation and keep going and zooming in. This is called the fractal zoom. And the same equation is going to produce images that you have never imagined before. You can go in and keep finding more beauty, more beauty, more patterns, more design, but all because you're constantly changing the C in your life. The colors, when the equation converges, we have got a dark color. When the equation does not converge, we have got a light color. And you are going to keep seeing that as you find these equations converging or not, these colors are changing. That's your life. That's your real life and that's your imaginary. That's your intangible in, your, in the world. And moreover, as you go deeper and deeper and deeper into this fractal zoom, you're going to come to this conclusion that where you started, where you s you're going to end over there again. Just like the lotus, it is born every day in a different circumstance. The lotus that is born tomorrow has got almost a different set of cells, but the same characteristics. It is born again. Every day it is born again, and it has got an opportunity to make a difference, very different difference in the world. All of you have the same potential to zoom into your life anytime. So let's look at a few characteristics of fractals, because that applies to you as well. The first one is self-similarity. That means you take that little equation and that plot called the Mandelbrot and you go zoom in. And more you zoom in, you're going to keep finding that you keep finding the same sign all over again in between all those designs. And you're going to see it on any part of this equation. It's like a world within the worlds. Every society and every religion in the world has tried to explain this concept from time immemorial. Hindu temples have got fractal designs. Our Gita is full of fractal references, including Krishna open his mouth and showing the world within him. The world within worlds is there in Christian texts, the book of Kels. You see those designs, they are all fractal designs. Look at Islamic art. The one on the left is actually art. The other one is actually the mathematical equation that I showed you. Look at the similarity of those things when there was no computer. There is something about this design and there is something about what I'm talking about, which has gone into life, has been with us all along, except that we didn't know how to express it. So all that I'm adding today is to expressing your life as that same pattern and see what we learn from it. Buddhist scriptures, the one on the right is a computer generated fractal. The one on the left is a Buddhist statue. Look at African village layouts. When people are left on their own without intervention, they create uh, fractal structures. That's a village in Zambia where they build houses that go around like that. And the chief stays in the center. And when the village grows, they just grow those things out. This grain silo, the grain silo is in um, Cameroon. 
it is built every year based on the season based on the yield of that place and they design and keep it that way the one in the middle the other picture is computer simulated look at the similarity of what we are seeing today and what people used to do many years ago left on their own the lotus has been a symbol of rebirth and reawakening in almost every religion every culture in the past look at the mandalas they are all reflected as lotuses right that picture in the middle is also computer generated and is modeled as an equation so that's what i'm talking about the second property of fractals is the degree of roughness very important property you take a lotus leaf and you know that it doesn't uh, absorb any water it does not absorb any water it just floats around and goes away because of fractal characteristics of the top if you look at it in one degree of zoom on 10 micrometers that's the the one in the bottom and if you go to the top it is even more granular and because of these the the roughness of this thing even though while it looks perfectly smooth we have something called a fractal dimension you take a piece of string and you say it is a straight line but it is not there is a lot of dimension in it if you take a sheet of paper it has a lot of dimensions in it your ability to see this dimension to see this little granularity in small and, and smaller pieces of anything art music science anything is your fractal dimension look at a snowflake and you will see that you are able to go down more and more the more iterations you do the more beautiful that image becomes now let me give you an example in real life all of you know sachin tendulkar taking a ball ball is coming at 175 kilometers per hour and he knows exactly how much to raise his bat and hit the ball most often than not he will get it right most often than not sometimes he gets out right what is he seeing that you and i cannot see so if we take that same fractal equation and start plotting it what you and i will see we will see this little blurry thing and the ball will whiz past at 175 kilometers per hour and off it goes to the other side right what sachin tendulkar will see is this sachin tendulkar is able to zoom in to that ball and able to see everything that has got to offer shoy bakhtar is bowling the ball is going to come at this speed it is going to spin like this it is going to come at this height and he has plotted in his mind this map and he knows exactly what to do without ever having to write down those equations that equation is in his mind the plot and the image is in his mind right this is the detail that any expert a fighter pilot when fighting and seeing all the different 200 dashboards in front of him knows exactly what to do he thinks in microseconds sachin tendulkar sees in microseconds what you and i will take hours or maybe never be able to do so what is your fractal dimension in life in the area that you are really good at the third is the zones suppose your life was a fractal you could be stuck in any one of these zones your body and mind equation you could be in the big boring zone you could be in the little boring zone or you could be in that interesting edge the edge where we say that are you living on the edge that is what it means where you can zoom in and see beauty where you zoom in and you have achievement where you zoom in and you have convergence convergence between your mind and matter right so let me just summarize this by four different things that i talked about the first one is when the body and mind equation converges when your life converges when your mind is there and your body is also there beautiful things happen and we we have known many many situations where your mind is there but your body is not there but you are sitting over here you are thinking about paying taxes or the budget i don't know what you are thinking but if both of you are not over here you will not get the benefit you will not converge so when you are doing something put your mind to it put your complete focus into it and then be conscious about whether you where you are and you will find convergence the second thing is like a lotus you're born every day you have got an opportunity to bloom every day and to zoom in to a different part of your life zoom in and understand a different thing in your life zoom in and help somebody else just like we heard before whatever it is you will see beauty when you see the detail right the second the third one is the amount of detail that you're able to sense see i'm not talking about the ability to see the ability to use all your senses to see this detail is what is going to differentiate you what is going to give you that extra bit of edge over everybody else that i am able to see this detail that others can't a good manager can see this detail a good mathematician a good artist can see this detail a good musician can see this detail use all your senses 
The last one is are you living on the edge or are you in the boring center? So if you find that you are in the boring center, make several changes C. Suppose you are in a spot where your mind and body are not converging, make several changes C and get back to the edge where you can zoom in and see beauty in this world. Emergence or self-awakening is when you find your fractal equation, when you find the beautiful equation of your life. Thank you.